Okay, so today we are doing the uh, climate change notes or uh, global warming. So let's get started with that. Um, we're just going to start with, because it is a controversial topic, so we're just going to start with um, a little bit of what the controversy is all about. Uh, it says the facts that are not in debate. Um, it is not in debate that there is a greenhouse effect. So we'll talk about what the greenhouse effect actually is. We've already talked about it a little bit, but it's the greenhouse effect is actually good. Uh, we need it to survive. If we did not have this warming atmosphere around the planet, um, temperatures would get really, really hot during the day, really, really cool at night, and we would not have life sustaining temperatures. So we do have to have the greenhouse effect. It is a good thing. Um, so that's not in debate. Uh, another thing that's not in debate is that there has been a recent pattern of increased average global temperature. Um, there, there's also been a uh, increase in sea level. There are many quantitative measurements that they're not in debate. It's a scientific fact. We can see that they have occurred. Uh, what the controversy is about is what the cause of all this is. Why has the temperature risen? Um, why has sea level risen? Um, is it human cause or is it all natural? So, and then what should we be doing about this? We'll talk about all of that today. Come on. Oops. Okay, so what are these experts, what are these scientists, these climatologists think? Um, the vast majority of scientists uh, that work in climatology accept the correlation between increased uh, GHG. You're going to see GHG a lot in the notes today. That's a greenhouse gas. So they accept the correlation between a higher amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are being emitted in the past couple hundred years and the increased temperatures that we've seen. Uh, we do have a group, a minority group of climatologists and scientists that question the cause and effect of those two um, different processes. Uh, some say that temperature change would be due to natural causes like Earth's rotational wobble, which we can talk more about in class. Uh, sunspot activity is a big one. Sunspot activity is the sun. Every once in a while it um, emits these uh, much hotter um, sunspots and that would increase the temperature of the planet. Um, and then a, a kind of a really controversial thing, idea, is that um, it's a rev an inverse relationship from increased greenhouse gases causing increased temperature. They think that the increased temperature um, is causing increased greenhouse gases. Uh, the, having a higher temperature actually allows a higher amount of greenhouse gases to exist in the atmosphere. Um, so that's kind of more of an extreme idea, but again, a, a small minority of, of these climatologists actually think that these could be the reasons why um, climate change is happening. Um, all of these people, they all agree that these feedback mechanisms are very complex and that models may not model the climate exactly. There's all sorts of climate models that are out there. It's kind of the same as like a weather model. When you turn on the uh, TV and you're trying to figure out is it going to snow tomorrow or not, depending on what channel you look at, they're going to be using different models. Um, and we know from this year that the meteorologists, they get it to get it wrong a lot because you have so many different models you're looking at, you have to make the best guess. So that's what these people are trying to do as well, except for they're trying to do it with long-term climate data. Okay, so past climate change, what has happened in the past? Uh, it says over the past 900,000 years, Earth climate has undergone long periods of cooling and global warming. We've had ice ages. We've had many periods of global warming. We've already talked about that with extinctions and stuff. A lot of extinctions have been caused by natural global warming when humans weren't even around. Um, during global cooling periods, again, there are ice ages, uh, you get this thick glacial ice that covers most of the planet, um, and it says a lot of these ice ages last about 100,000 years, so again, that kind of puts it into perspective how long this planet's been around and how much it's changed over time. We're really just a speck on this planet, and we've only been around for a little bit of time, and we're already making big changes as far as a lot of these climatologists think. Uh, during global warming, we have um, we have warm interglacial periods that last about 10,000 years, and says we're currently nearing the end of a warm period. How do we know this? We look at data from lots of different things out in nature. We can look at tree rings. We can analyze plankton that we have found, fossilized plankton and ocean sediments. 
Uh, we can look at gases that have been trapped in glaciers. Uh, we can look at pollen from lake bottoms, again, uh, ancient stuff that would give us information about the past, other historical records, and we can, we've had direct measurement of climate-based stuff and uh, natural stuff that, that leads us to climate-based data since the 1800s. Okay, so re-examining the greenhouse effect. Um, if we look at the picture here, it says we see the sun, and we see the sun emitting a UV radiation towards the planet. Um, and again, we're going to talk about the fate of the incoming solar radiation. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing that now, but just remember some of it is reflected, some of it is absorbed. Um, but eventually, anything that's absorbed gets re-emitted as this infrared radiation. Okay. Um, and just the difference is this, this UV radiation that comes in, it's little tiny kind of quick wavelengths. The infrared radiation is big, long heat wavelengths. So it is going to be warm and um, these long wavelengths. So what this defines the greenhouse effect as, it says some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere but is absorbed and re-emitted in all directions by greenhouse gas molecules and clouds. So the greenhouse gas molecules and even clouds, water vapor, actually re-radiate um, that heat back as these long infrared radiation waves. Okay, so that's what greenhouse gases do. Greenhouse gases actually, they absorb that the incoming sunlight and they re-radiate it as that long wave um, infrared radiation. Okay, and it says the effect of this is to warm Earth's surface and the atmosphere. This is the greenhouse effect. Okay, and then this just kind of says the same type thing. The effect is caused by gases in the atmosphere reducing heat losses by radiation back into space. Greenhouse gases trap heat energy that is reflected from Earth's surface and re-radiate. That's a really important term to know. The gases actually re-radiate that heat back in the form of infrared radiation. <clears throat> okay, so again, real quick. So what happens to the incoming UV radiation? Um, so about 45% of it is absorbed, scattered, or reflected by the atmosphere and clouds before it even gets to the surface. Of the rest of it that actually gets to the surface, 4% of that is reflected, 51% is absorbed, um, which could mean it's used in photosynthesis, heating the ground and water, evaporation processes, um, and then one more time, when, when it's re-released, when it's re-radiated, it's re-radiated in the form of this longer wavelength infrared energy, which is heat, which causes greenhouse effect. Okay, and I have just a couple graphics for you here. Um, this is was taken from Antarctic ice core. So again, they drill the ice cores and they look at data from thousands and thousands of years ago. So it's just kind of cool that it shows um, as the temperature fluctuates throughout thousands of years back. So it has the um, CO2 level. So again, most people correlate that to mean that um, higher CO2 means higher temperature, lower CO2 means lower temperature. But again, some people think that's actually a backwards relationship. Okay, this is another important graphic. You are going to see this again. This is um, taken from Hawaii, and it's actually showing you CO2 levels since the 1960s. And it's showing you what happens seasonally to the CO2 levels. We have this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, but we see the general warming trend. Um, Sorry, this isn't warming, this is CO2. We see the general increased trend of CO2 um, over these past decades. So if we look and we zoom in and we see what's actually happening to the CO2 levels seasonally, what we see happening is that during like the winter and the spring, we have really high CO2, but then all of a sudden once we get into spring, like May, June, when we get into spring and summer, the CO2 level starts to fall. And then when we get back into autumn and winter, the CO2 level starts to rise. What's the reason for that? Well, the reasoning for that is that in the spring and summer, you start to have more vegetation growth. Okay? You start to have more plants, more trees that start to do more photosynthesis. And when they do that, when you're doing photosynthesis, you're taking in CO2. So if plants are using CO2, the CO2 level goes down. Uh, when growth kind of stops in the fall and the winter, the CO2 level goes back up. So that's why we see this seasonal up, down, up, down, up, down. Less CO2 when we have plants, more CO2 when we don't have plants. 
Okay, another very important thing for this chapter are your greenhouse gases. We have to know these, we have to know where they come from, and we need to know the facts about them. So, uh, you do have water vapor, which is all natural. Uh, you have CO2, of course, it's kind of our star of the show. Methane, nitrous oxide, CFCs, and ozone. And most of these we've already seen in our air pollution unit. Um, but these are all also involved with greenhouse gases. Um, so some things you need to know about water vapor. It's the most abundant natural greenhouse gas, meaning non-anthropogenic, uh, so um, all natural. It contributes to heating of the ocean surface and the lower atmosphere. And here's a little uh, positive feedback spin here. It says higher temperatures could mean more evaporation rates, could mean more water vapor, could mean more warming, could mean more evaporation, could mean more rising water vapor, and this is, we can continue on and on and on and on. That's a good example of a positive feedback mechanism. <clears throat> okay, another important greenhouse gas is CO2. Um, it is present naturally, and actually a very small percentage, but it's a potent greenhouse, greenhouse gas. So even though it's a small percentage, it is like the poster child of um, greenhouse gas emissions. So um, it is a big deal. Um, of course, it has increased a lot since our industrial revolution. Um, again, so humans have only been industrialized for a very short time. And in that amount of time, we've released a lot of stuff through combustion of fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, uh, and petrol. And then for every kilogram of fossil fuels burned, three kilograms is actually released. Um, some things that can exacerbate this, deforestation, because plants and trees are huge, what we call carbon storages or carbon sinks. Um, so if you have fewer trees and fewer forests, forests, wow, fewer trees and fewer forests, uh, you have less places to absorb CO2. So you have less CO2 holders, and then also when you burn trees, you release even more CO2 into the atmosphere, so it's kind of like a double whammy. Um, so we need trees, that's actually a, a carbon sequestration strategy, is to plant more trees, plant more plants, because they will absorb CO2. Okay, methane. Methane is big in farms and agriculture. Uh, one of the things that you should know about methane, it is very potent. It is very, very strong greenhouse gas. It says it's a more effective absorber of long wave radiation, of that infrared radiation, than CO2. It's 30 times more effective. So it is, it's a very, very potent greenhouse gas. It's present in a smaller amount um, than CO2, but what we have is very potent. Um, we can actually make methane in landfills. Most landfills are very responsible though, and they actually capture the methane, and they actually use methane as a fuel to power their um, landfill. Our landfill actually does that here. So they're kind of like a self-sustaining landfill. It's pretty cool. Um, agriculture, so methane is released from intestines of these ruminant type animals, like cows and sheep that have the long intestines. Um, so what actually gives off methane? It's actually cow and sheep and um, other animals farts okay farts and burps so some people have said well, we need to you know we need to farm less of these animals to reduce the methane or we need to figure out a way to capture their burps and their farts so they don't release methane to the atmosphere um, any sort of anaerobic environment where you don't have oxygen uh, methane a lot of times is a product of these bacteria so swampy boggy wetland type places uh, can give off methane uh, coal mines and natural gas can give off methane um, it's being added to the atmosphere faster than it can be broken down, like a lot of these other greenhouse gases. And the increase with methane also increases with population correlation, just like a lot of these other greenhouse gases. Okay, nitrous oxide also is a big time um, agricultural uh, byproduct, so it says it's the consequence of anaerobic denitrification processes. Um, it's also given off from uh, fertilizing land. And then it can also be given off from industrial sources like uh, high temperature combustion of fossil fuels. Okay, so farming and industrial there. And then good old CFCs, we just talked about these a bunch with ozone depletion. So we should know all about them. Fluoro chlorofluorocarbons, uh, one of the worst things about them is that they live long, they're very stable. It takes forever to get rid of them, to break them down. Uh, we know that um, not only do they um, are they a greenhouse gas? They contribute to 
global warming. They also deplete the ozone. Um, again, very potent. They can absorb 10,000 times more radiation than CO2. So even though CO2 is like our poster child, these guys are, are very, very potent. Um, all CFCs are all man-made. They're all anthropogenic. So, And we've talked about where they come from. Any kind of like spray foam or spray um, insulation. Uh, some cleansers have CFCs. Aerosol sprays, not in our country anymore, but they used to. Uh, coolants, refrigerators, air conditioners, uh, those all have CFCs in them. <clears throat> okay, uh, tropospheric ozone also, so we just talked about um, CFCs, but ozone in the troposphere is actually um, a greenhouse gas as well. So it says formed in the lower troposphere of the atmosphere where we live through photochemical processes. Um, ozone in the troposphere is bad not only because it causes pollution and smog, but it also contributes to global warming. So those are your greenhouse gases. Now where do they come from? Uh, annual greenhouse gas emissions by sector. Um, if we look here, let's see, where's our biggest breakdown? Looks like power stations over here is the winner with 21.3%. Looks like industry in general is pretty high with 16.8%. Transportation, 14%. Agriculture, almost 13%. Um, actually going and retrieving fossil fuels and processing them is almost 12%. So, you know, just the fact that we have to go and get fossil fuels contributes a significant chunk to this. Not even the burning of them, um, which would be in these guys over here. Okay, so just the fact of finding them and getting them takes up a, a chunk of our pipe. Uh, residential, commercial, other sources actually don't make up too much, only about 10%. Land use and biomass burning about 10%. Waste disposal and treatment is 3%. Okay, and then you have a breakdown of three of our um, pretty bad greenhouse gases, and it shows you the same breakdown here. So CO2, the big contributors are power, industry, transportation. No surprise there. Uh, methane, big producer here is agriculture. Again, that's not a surprise. We just talked about that. And then also getting your fossil fuels out of the ground. Nitrous oxide, biggest, is agriculture, and then also land use and biomass burning. Okay, and then this just kind of shows the same thing here, emissions by gas and um, original percentage total. Yep, so this just shows us breakdown of each of your different greenhouse gases, CO2, um, nitrogen dioxide, shows you all the different things that are the biggest contributors to them. So if you want to come back and look and see uh, where they're coming from, you can. Okay, so what is climate change and what will happen? Um, so climate change can mean more than just global warming, can mean more than just the general warming trend. With climate change, we see a lot of differences in our climate. Um, so some of those would be change temperature or rainfall patterns. More severe storms, that's one that a lot of people are worried about. Um, ice sheet thinning or thickening. Ice sheet thinning is something we definitely see. Again, quantitative data proves that these ice sheets are thinning. Um, sea level rises, again, that is something that's happening. Um, it may not be a steady process because, again, even in the past um, few decades, it says that we've actually recorded some global cooling, uh, like back in the 70s. But... Um, the general trend is warming over the last century. We see that warming temperature trend. Oops. Okay, so consensus view, we've already talked a little bit about this. It says evidence that the greenhouse gas concentrations have increased since Industrial Revolution and human activity has caused this. That's what most people believe. Um, the climate is changing. Some of this may do to natural stuff. Again, one of your main um, aspects with the, with the natural theory here is sunspot activity wobble of the earth. Um, it says, but the climate and weather patterns are very, very complex, so only time will tell what's actually going to happen and what it's caused by. Okay, now, so we've got all these panels, and we've got all this legislation we'll talk about later, but um, we have the IPCC, which is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, made up of hundreds of scientists from around the world, um, experts especially in climate, obviously. Uh, this was set up by UNEP, United Nations, and uh, they created a report, tells us some information, and it gives us some predictions about what they think is going to happen. 
me see how far. I'm probably going to stop about halfway through so we can cut this into two sections. Um, so here's what the report says. It says CO2 from burning of fossil fuels and land use change has elevated CO2 level from 379 parts per million from 280 parts per million before industry and it's increasing 1.9 parts per million per year. So CO2 in the atmosphere is increasing um, and this has happened since the Industrial Revolution so we can assume that the CO2 level is increasing from human activities. Okay, and then methane and nitrous oxide also continue to increase due to agriculture. Air and sea temperatures are high, ice and snow are melting, and the mean sea level is rising, and then warming in the last 100 years has caused about a 0.74 degrees Celsius increase in global average temperature. So these are all facts stated by this panel. Here's some other things in the report. Uh, glaciers and ice sheets have melted, and this water and thermal expansion of oceans has fairly likely led to a sea level rise of 3.1 millimeters per year. Um, and then the Antarctic sea ice has not changed. Thermal expansion, what that is, is um, so we're melting the ice, and it's turning into water, and the ocean, on average, is getting warmer and warmer as well. Uh, thermal expansion means that when something gets warmer, it actually can take up more space. Okay, it actually expands. So that's the phenomenon why, um, you know, even though we're melting this ice and it's causing water levels to rise, one of the reasons it's actually rising even more is a warm ocean is actually going to take up more space. It's called thermal expansion. Uh, this is a big one. Okay, hurricane and storm intensity has increased. Um, why does this happen? It happens due to higher sea temperatures. Now we talked about that too, even with snowstorms. Um, they say even with really drastic snowstorms, a lot of those get started with a warmer ocean that causes more evaporation, which leads to big clouds, which leads to uh, just getting dumped on. Uh, hurricanes, again, the way that they form, um, they're going to become very violent, they're going to pick up a lot of speed when they form over really warm ocean, okay? And so that's why they've blamed a lot of these really strong, intense storms we've seen in the past years on this, on this warmed uh, ocean. Okay, what are some predictions from the IPCC? They predict that if CO2 levels double, the temperature will go up by 3 degrees Celsius. Uh, dry regions will continue to get drier, desertification. Uh, droughts will worsen, and wet regions will actually get wetter with more flooding. Um, coasts will erode and corals will be bleached. Uh, coral bleaching happens in the ocean due to climate change. Um, ecosystems will degrade and they will not be able to act like carbon sinks as, as well as they used to. And then food production should increase as long as the temperature does not rise more than 3 degrees Celsius. That one's a little bit weird. Um, it depends if Obviously, if the temperature gets above 3 degrees Celsius, that wouldn't be the case, but they're saying some places would actually um, have greater sunlight, would have more photosynthesis, they actually might produce more food. But any land that's going to get dried out or flooded um, would actually, well, if it's dried out, it's go going through desertification, and you'll, it'll be less farming, less food that's able to be made. But some places further away from the equator might actually get more sunlight and therefore could make some more food. So that statement's a little bit needs a little bit of explanation. Okay, um, let's see. I will do, actually I think this is a good stopping point. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is halfway done and I'll do a part two so that we can break this up a little bit.